What's up everybody? Welcome back to the FNG Academy. Buck here, former Green Beret, here to help you guys get selected. Alright guys, back from Texas. Had a blast. It was awesome to get to meet some of you guys. Don't worry, I'll be back in Texas doing some more book signings and be able to meet uh, more of you guys. And I'll be still doing some more traveling all over the country to meet as many of you guys as possible. So I appreciate the support. And I'm super glad to hear you guys' stories and to help motivate you to reach your goals and achieve your dreams. Whether that's special operations or something completely different, it doesn't matter. The mindset is the mindset. So use that special operations mindset to achieve whatever goals it is that you want to achieve. So thank you for picking up Rising Above, checking it out, reviewing it on Amazon. You guys are awesome. I really appreciate it. Do me a favor. Let's get 2,000 likes on this video. I really appreciate you guys. Quick note from the sponsor. 18 Alpha Fitness. Go check out 18 Alpha Fitness. Kevin is an amazing dude, and he's going to help you get selected for special operations by helping you get physically stronger, more agile, injury prevention, all of the above. So go check out Kevin at 18 Alpha Fitness. Sign up and get ready physically for selection. Get strong and fast and limba, do some yoga. All right, guys, in this video, we're going to talk about Delta Force. Delta Force, CAG, SMU, uh, whatever you know them as, I'm going to help you guys understand what the sign up process is like for Delta Force. And is it too soon for you guys who are not even in the Army to start thinking about Delta Force? Yes and no. Yes, you have a long way to go, and I'll explain that in the process in a minute. But at the same time, you need to find the things that motivate you to keep pushing when things are down. Uh, I would be 100% a liar if I said there wasn't civilians out there who made the decision that they were going to go all the way to the top uh, of the military chain, regardless of what that took, even before basic training, and didn't make it. It happens. People are going to make that decision as civilians, like, I'm going to make it all the way to uh, Delta Force or whatever unit you want. And then they go make it happen because they just are the right people. They have the right mindset. They have the focus. And when they make a decision, they're going to go make it happen. So it's not fair to those people to withhold information because it's a long way away. It's like, so what, dude? If you decide you're going to make it, you may very well make it. And that's the difference between me and other people is I always look at you guys as future operators. When I meet you, I don't look at you guys as like hopefuls that might fail because that's a, a BS negative way to go about it. But anyway, let's talk about Delta Force. I was not in Delta Force. I didn't go to selection. Um, I got out before really thinking about going down that path. But I do know the process of how you're going to sign up. I'm not talking about what Delta Force is like on a day-to-day -day basis because I don't know. I wasn't there. It's a very secretive unit. Um, I do have friends over there. I'm actually interviewing one in a couple weeks. Uh, he just retired from Delta and <laughs> I sent him a list of questions and I got a list back and like most of them were lined out. We're like, no, you're not asking that. One of those being, what type of people are you looking for? And that was a hard no. So um, I think the type of person probably changes um, or they just don't want you to get in your own head and think that you know what they're looking for. Um, so they keep their stuff very secretive. CAG is amazing at keeping stuff low key. But what is the process like and what are you going to have to do to achieve that goal? So the first goal is going to become special operations. So you're going to want, not always, again, you could join from um, regular army, you could join from any MOS, you could even join from different branches. So the Marines could go to uh, CAG selection. But I don't want to talk too much on that because I don't know what their process is like. I imagine Marines are going to have a completely different process to get through. So let's focus on what an Army guy um, is going to have to do to go to CAG selection and what they're going to have to do to prepare and the expectations. Typically the expectation, and this is typically, I'm not saying it can't happen, but that you have either our Ranger or a Green Beret. So they want you to have some type of uh, special operations background before going typically the guy i'm going to interview next week came from regular army and knocked it out i imagine that he had years and years of experience he had multiple combat deployments i know he did um, so he was an asset regardless of not having that but typically they want you to be a ranger or a green beret before submitting uh, my good buddy golan um, that i graduated the q course with he's on my memorial bracelet he got killed in afghanistan he went twice finished both times and then the second time they said Go get some Green Beret experience or some Ranger, and then you can come back and we'll take it from there. So he became a Green Beret um, and unfortunately got 
killed in action in Afghanistan. The idea is that you have experience that you bring to the table and that you're the type of person they're looking for. But this is also the process. So let's say you get to range regiment or you get to a group and you become a Green Beret. What do you do now? So the next step is gonna be contacting a recruiter from Delta Force and then he's gonna set up a PT test with you and um, he's gonna come administer a PT test with all the guys that wanna submit their applications. Your application is gonna to go to Delta Force, a Sergeant Major is gonna review your application and you are either gonna get selected to attend the next selection or you are gonna get denied uh, to attend selection. And they're either gonna, they're gonna review your packet, they're gonna review your NCOERs, they're gonna review everything in your packet to see if you're the type of person they're looking for and to see if your history um, has matched their expectations. So if you know that you wanna go to take CAG, make sure that throughout your military career, you're working your butt off to get uh, exceptional NCOERs and make sure that your packet is squared away. You're not gonna to wanna to have anything negative in your packet. Maybe some guys get away with that, but my buddy um, had a one negative NCOER after years and years of amazing service and that's been tripping him up for his selection date. But I think if he keeps pushing it, he'll, en he'll end up getting it. You're gonna want a stellar packet. You're gonna submit that packet to the Sergeant Major. Sergeant Major is gonna give you the yes or no, and then you can go to your selection date. Selection is super secretive, and it's amazingly tough. Um, one of my old teammates got selected, and at the end of it, he had, uh, I think it was either breaks in his foot or uh, shin, a break in his shin. It was something like, he had some kind of fracture um, hairline fracture by the time that he finished because he had pushed so hard uh, to make it happen. So selection is going to be extremely difficult. From his class, I believe it was like three guys got selected. Three guys. That's how few people get selected. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't try. People make it all the time. So of those three guys, what's going to happen from there is then you're going to get a slot to what they call OTC, Operator's Training Course. And then Operator's Training Course is where you're going to go learn how to be an assaulter um, and be a CAG dude and learn how to shoot move communicate their way from there you'll get picked up to go to uh, your team that's as much as i know obviously i'll ask uh, my boy jason as much as i can and hopefully he gives some clarification when we do our podcast together next week and talk about um, his experience in cag his experience in regular army but that's the process you're going to want to get to a special operations or get as much experience as you can keep your packet super clean um, crush that PT test because you got to remember you're not just passing a PT test you're competing with guys that are already in special operations and already are exceeding expectations within special operations so top guys of the top guys those are the ones that are trying to go for uh, CAG because they still are wanting more and wanting to push themselves even more and even harder after re obtaining um, Ranger or Green Beret so you are in competition with the best of the best, and that's gonna start with your packet and your history. It's gonna also come down to your PT test score, which has to be exceptionally high. It's not just passing. They want you to be fast and extremely in shape. And then it's gonna come down to selection. Very few people are gonna get selected, but if your packet gets picked up by the Sergeant Major, then you get a selection date. If you're the one of the few that gets selected, you go to OTC, and from there, you're an operator. There is another option. You could be a uh, support element. So if you want to continue your MOS or you didn't get picked up in selection and they offer you a job as a support, um, you could be comms and then go to Bragg, uh, work directly for them, and then you'll be supporting uh, CAG. Would I want to go CAG if I was going to stay in the military? The answer is 100% yes, and here's why. CAG guys operate unilaterally. So no more wondering if that Afghan guy is going to shoot you in the back, if he loaded his gun, if he's going to hit the target he's shooting at. You're just around a bunch of highly trained dudes. And honestly, you are trying to keep up with them because you're probably the weakest link in the group of guys that you are operating with. So that would have been an awesome place to be. Be an assaulter. Only worry about yourself because the guys around you are probably uh, so much better than you and you're trying to keep up with them. I think that would be an awesome place to work, um, but shoulda, coulda, woulda. I love where I'm at, I love what I'm doing, and if that's the route that you guys wanna take, more power to you. Talk to you guys next time. And I can't see it clearly, but it's obvious. I know that you love